Brothers, I am on the mountain and it's a smoky day. I can even feel it in my throat. There's just a lot of wild, wildfires happening right now. So what's on my heart today is the concept of the goddess woman. There is the beginning of our life. We come into this world through a woman. We have our mother and we look to her for comfort, affirmation. She's what makes us feel secure and it's where we run to when we fall and hurt our knee. It's who we want to take care of us and we are happy young little guys running around the house playing with our toys in a perfect world and then we start to grow up and we realize that there's bills to pay and there's responsibilities to hold and we're flung out into life there's school there's deadlines and then we notice that women are attractive we like these girls and in a young age we start to attach ourselves to a girlfriend or a wife and we want that experience to continue that we experienced with our mom. It made us feel good. Everything felt right and in its place. But here's what happens. We are pulling now from the woman an energy that will turn her into a woman who does not need a man. You will feel like one of her children. You are putting her in the position of mother. Within us is an aspect of woman. Even though we are men and we thrive and we love to conquer and have strength to be clear and confident, women come from man. There's a part of us that resonates with it. When we see a woman, you put her in the home and in a short amount of time, there's pictures on the walls, there's doilies on the counters. They bring birthing of newness everywhere they go. They always have a flowing energy like that that just draws us in. For some women, children are just what they want to be bringing into this world. And in a biological sense, their bodies are producing life around them. For some other women, it's more pets, little puppies and cats. They just can't uh, keep themselves contained. They just love them so much. What about man? There's cravings in us in a similar sense, but our biological makeup doesn't just produce offspring in the room around us from our own bodies. We can give our seed to a woman and she can produce offspring. The masculine aspect of this is that we love to create. We love to go out and take things that are physically not there yet and make it be. Men have what innovated most of what we see in society, our structure, our buildings, our roads. Most of this was engineered through men. And sure, a woman could adopt these, these desires and have good skills and be able to bring this about but for the most part man also yearns to bring new life into our surroundings since we no longer live in a time where the woman was dependent on the brute strength of her man to go out and wrestle the wild boar and bring it home so we had food and so she didn't starve and die there's some elements of our manhood that are not valued by women anymore yet we hold women still as the goddess and we worship the goddess and we put our sense of value in whether or not she values us. Even in the sense of like this, when it comes to sex, what's the number one priority for many men? It's that, can I make her come? And under that is our sense of, if I can make her come, then I am valuable. It's not anti-masculine to embrace your feminine aspects. When we see a beautiful woman, there's something in us that is activated. It resonates with it, it harmonizes with it, it feels right. It's a piece of us we feel that is gone and she brings it back and we love that complete feeling. So within your masculinity, when the woman has detached from you and left, you've just faced divorce or she just said, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, or you've lost your mother and you're in a place now where she's been removed. This is life moving the man into a place where he can recreate his masculinity that is not dependent upon that goddess. Where he can touch into those aspects of himself, where he can be the bringer of new life. 
and he can be his goddess. It's coming up from that place of nothingness into that new man. What you've done is now you've decided where you're going and now you can decide who's coming with you. All of us, a lot of us made the mistake of choosing you and you and that pretty girl are coming with me. But we don't even know where we're going at that stage in our life. We had it backwards. We don't get to decide who's coming with us until we know where we're going, until we know what those aspects are that we're gonna produce and multiply and thrive in because we're no longer attached to the momminess of the goddess. <laughs> we all know woman is a powerful force, but it comes from men. It's a part of us that is over there. Find it within yourself. We tend to attract women that are maybe a little more masculine if we're a little more feminine, or if we're really, really alpha 2.0, we tend to attract a much more flowing, receptive type women. There's polarity in those opposites, but it's not really a true opposite because within us, for every hard direction we have, there is also a hard opposite. It's just more suppressed in the shadows, but it's there. We're a being of contradictions. There's always a subconscious element to everything we're doing that there is an opposite. It's the balance of yin and yang. It's the energies of north and south. And we feel that as men within us, the tugs and the desires and the repulsions. There's always an element of all of it within us. And when women retracts out of our life, it gives us that opportunity to find it, to feel it without a woman making everything feel better. Because once you are emotionally and physically connected into a girl, it's harder for you to reach into these different aspects of yourself and develop them because she's making you feel so good. It's that piece of you that's back. But it never left. We just, from a young age, had it over there as our mommies brought us into this world. But stepping into your manhood is the initiation process of letting that go.